Practical tutorial number 9 Identify radio bands for the practical assessment Competency number 9 Let's have a read of the competency first Number 9 Identify amateur radio bands for the foundation license or for the standard or advanced license if the candidate is attempting that assessment. So if you're doing a foundation you'll be asked questions about frequency bands for the foundation license. If you're doing a standard you'll be asked about frequency bands for the standard license and advanced you'll be asked frequency bands for the advanced license. Now this competency is not hard because you're allowed to look it up in the LCD, the regulations which you should have printed and take to your assessment and if you don't have it ask the assessor if he's got a copy because to pass this asset, this competency all you need to do is look up the LCD in front of the assessor and point to the bands and read them out that he asks you. It's as simple as that. The candidate has supplied a copy of the appropriate license condition determination. Well I'd have it myself and I'd take it with me and I'd, I'd have the pages bookmarked <coughs> excuse me that have the permitted bands for foundation, standard and advanced and we'll look at that in a moment. And the, your job is to identify four bands and their frequency limits correctly identified, not from memory by looking at the LCD. So let's go and have a look at the LCD now. This slide is of the Radio Communications License Conditions Amateur License Determination Number 1 of 1997. <clears throat> now, Radio Amateurs simply refer to this as the LCD and it's the regulations governing the operation of amateur stations in Australia. You should have the latest copy of this, it's always available from the ACMA website. You'll also find a recent copy on the WIA website www.wia.org.au and you'll also find a copy in supplementary downloads <coughs> on the Radio and Electronic School website www.res.res.net.au that's res.net.au you can download and print your own copy of the LCD really good idea to do that because you're allowed to use it during the practical assessment to point out to the assessor where the ba frequency bands are that foundation, standard and advanced are allowed to operate So suppose you're doing an advanced exam and you're doing the practical for it, the assessor might, will ask you for four bands to name four bands that the standard, sorry, the advanced amateur radio operator can use. This is a very large document and I know that that's Schedule 2, so I'm going to do a search in this document for Schedule 2 and I'm going to have to search a couple of times. I get because Schedule 2 is mentioned. There we are, Schedule 2. Schedule 2 is the permitted bands for the advanced station. Advanced stations. So I would have this printed if I was you. That's on page 29. And they're all the frequency bands that an advanced station could use. So the assessor would say just point out four bands and you simply have to open this document and say well okay these are the bands, these are the HF bands for example that an amateur, advanced amateur can operate on. They're all the HF bands. And he'll simply get you to read out uh, four of those from the paper. Now if you're doing standard the next schedule down is schedule 2, uh, sorry, uh, schedule 3 and they are the permitted bands for the standard station and all you have to do is read out four of these bands and the assessor will be very happy. And schedule, schedule 3A just down a bit further is for foundation so if you're doing a foundation practical 
the assessor will get you to read out four of those bands as easy as that. Just make sure you have your LCD with you and make sure you have a bookmark in it on page 29 I think it is. Yes, 29 for the advanced license and then the next couple of pages over uh, standard and foundation. Can't fail this one if you have a copy of the LCD with you. That's it for Competency 9.